you know, I, I was a high school math teacher, and trust me, I gave that test, and the class was never disqualified. I gave a test. Yeah, but you weren't helping people make some jack. See, yes, I was helping people make some jack. No order to time. I was trying to change their lives. Get out of here. Be a gang member. <laughs> they say, I don't want to do my homework with somebody who did well. So that's all right. Somebody has to roll my lawn. That's cool. You did. You did not. I did too. Actually, if you want to know, you need to do some sort of theological conversation. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And, um, and it might really help somebody else or just be something that's like totally different that you heard or you remember from your business. So it's just a really powerful um, exercise there. Uh, your first thing is gonna be number two. And that's gonna be like, what's that first thing when you walk out of here? You know, you go to a lot of these workshops and stuff and you never implement. So really what you're doing is wasting your time, just being honest. So what's that one thing that, that man, we gotta get this done like by Monday, we gotta get this implemented. And then what's one word that you would use to describe the experience here, right? So we really wanna use that to, to share and to help us kind of make these things better. So there's three parts to every business, every single business. There's sales, there's organization, and there's finances in every business, especially real estate. But real estate, we just blow right by this, and all we ever talk about is sales, and all we ever try and do is sales and lead generation and lead generation, and we get on a hamster wheel, and we don't really do anything from there because we're stuck on a hamster wheel. So this has to do with traffic, relationships, which we're going to talk about a lot today, call to action, and follow-up, which is going to be more the second workshop we're going to do next month here. It's going to be a lot about follow-up. And then organization, you've got people, places, and things. So, of course, we're going to talk about people a lot today. With finances, you've got saving. You've got return on investment, which we're going to talk a lot about today. And we've got expenses. I'm going to share some really good news for you. You don't have to write all this stuff down because you're going to get a copy of PowerPoint. Cool? Here's what I do want you to do, though, is grab a clean sheet of paper. If you don't have a sheet of paper, you raise your hand. Anybody else need paper? On the sheet of paper, you're going to write across the top, people matter. People matter. People matter. So this is what you want to take notes on. It's the stuff here where you get your copies of. So um, don't waste your brain cells and your time and your paper writing down that stuff, okay? People matter. I want you to write three asterisks off of the left side of your paper at the top. Three asterisks. Leave plenty of room underneath it because we're going to do an exercise later that's going to be really beneficial for you. Three asterisks. So as we're talking today, what I want you to do is just think of people that you know, not necessarily clients, not necessarily people that you want to, to sell their house or to help them buy a house, but just people that are in your sphere. It could be, it could be referral relationships. That would be excellent. It could be uh, personal friends. It could be people from church, people from a community group, people from a network group, whatever. But three people that can really use this information. The stuff we're going to talk about today is probably going to help you really start to implement this game-changing mindset, right, of dealing with people. Um, okay, so the seven drivers for results. We talked about this. Really helpful so that we can kind of gauge these and tweak these workshops that we do to make it most beneficial for you and where you are in your business. Um, okay, so the mindset of day to day. So we're going to go through this pretty fast, but this is really important to understand before we jump into this idea. So most people don't database because it's overwhelming. Uh, you're uncertain which CRM you should use, which database system to use. Uh, the knowledge, I'm just, I'm not techy enough. Time, I have no time because we're all out there chasing around leads, getting people in contracts, showing property, trying to list property. Um, content, how would I get content to talk about regularly? I was talking with Joe right beforehand. There's the automated stuff, the 33 touch, and that's great. But you know what? The 33 touch is not nearly as impactful as as eyeball to eyeball or on the phone, right? Um, your plan, most people have no communication plan at all, right? So it's like uh, somebody said, was it uh, was it in Orlando? Someone said something like, yeah, we talk, but it's just random. And there's a lot of people kind of chuckled, like that's kind of how it works. It's just random communications, but nothing is strategic. Um, value, I just don't get any results, that, that ROI. I don't have the time to, to really plug into my database and, and invest into it because I just, I don't see the results from it. And really what that is is a lack of tracking, right? So we're gonna go through some of that stuff, touch on it today, really get some stuff to implement it um, in the second workshop. Okay, so now recently reported 83% of people, they would use their same agent again, but only 9% do. You guys may have seen this, it's kind of, it's, it's important to know. 12% actually can name their agent and 8% have their name and phone number. You know what I find interesting is um, they might know your name and it, it's pretty easy to find your name, right, Robin? I mean, gosh, Robin. You spell it differently though, right? Right? No? Robin. Oh, jeez. You sound so familiar. I was like, what if like Robin? She spells it real different. She spells it very differently. What's her first name? Adina. So I wouldn't know how to spell Adina, but I could look up Adina, your last name, or just your, your name, and real estate agent Tampa. But people don't do it. They don't, it's just Googling it, right? They might not Google your name. If you're not found on Google, that might be something you need to do is Google your name tonight, and if you don't, see your name out there, that's kind of a problem. But, uh, 
What's that? Clean up what it says about you. And be careful what we did over here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they just forget about us. And you know what? In the mortgage business, they forget about us too. In the title business, they forget about you. In insurance, they forget about you. That's just kind of the way it rolls. So what you're going to learn today, everybody knows why they're here today, right? You guys signed up, you know it's database. Okay, cool. So we're going to skip that. So Dunbar's number. So Michael Mayer talks a lot about this in his book. Basically, you got 150 people in your sphere that you can honestly, sincerely have a, a, a significant relationship with, a real relationship with. Even Facebook. So it doesn't matter if you have 1,000 plus people on Facebook. Maybe I have more than 1,000 friends on Facebook. And we like beat our chest about it. And you know what? You never communicate with any of those people, right? We're going to go through an awesome Facebook strategy. Lady in Orlando, Keller Williams agent, said her big aha. She's like, I will never look at Facebook again. And I was like, wow, this isn't a Facebook training. But that was the power of aha. And it was just like, in, I think it was like five slides that we shared on that. So statistical numbers of people. Our mobility rate says people move once every five years. So hang with me really quick as we go through these numbers. It's, it's going to be something that might just really change your perspective. 20% of people you know are moving this year, just playing those numbers. Okay? I'm not a gambler, but I love looking at statistics and just saying, well, I'd rather be on the right side of statistics than on the wrong side, or worse, ignore statistics completely. So you have 30 people moving each year in your database right now. Who does not have a database on paper or digital format? Thank you for sharing and being honest. Anybody else not have a database? Perfect. Appreciate that. Okay, so what this means... What? I'm working it. Yep, that's right. right. So you're in the right place. Bob told me... Uh, about that website yeah. yesterday, so that's I'm gonna go through that one. We're gonna share, yeah, we're gonna share Juggler. some stuff. Yeah, we're gonna share some of that in the middle, just a little bit here. So, um, so here's the, here's the deal: you have 30 people moving each year in your community of people, just on the 150 people. Is what that says, okay? Uh, potentially, there's 60 transactions because you have a buyer side and a seller side. Well, my people are first-time buyers. That's fine, but they're gonna buy a house from somebody. You never know. Once you have a communication plan. It is wild how many people that you can touch just because you have a communication plan, right? So it's a big, big thing. That's just the first level 150 contacts. So it's going to be a really good idea to have a plan in place to connect up and wisely communicate with those 150 people, right? So check this out. With 30 people moving each year, if you could just convert 50%, who thinks that they could convert 50% of their closest family, friends, relatives, people that know, like, and trust you? Is 50% a safe number or is it way too high? I think it's high, you think it's low. Uh, yeah. Let's just say let's just say it's 50%. There's your numbers right there. That's 15 deals a year. And if your average price is a hundred thousand for a sale, that's forty-five thousand GCI. So basically you just got a forty-five thousand dollar raise by having a stinking communication plan that by the way, ninety-five percent of real estate agents and mortgage people and title people and insurance people just never have because it A never heard about it. If they read the book, that's great. But how the heck are they going to get it implemented? That's a different, that's a different thing altogether, right? Because implementation is the real important thing here. But you can see who's got a who's got an average sales price over hundred thousand. Perfect. So fill in the blank in your life. Whoa, those numbers are crazy. Do any of you have a systematic, implemented, executable communication plan right now in place? Awesome. So if you only ask way too high, something like that's way too high. Convert 10% of those people, three deals, and there's your numbers. So, I mean, I'll take an extra $9,000 in my bank account every year for really just communicating with people that I already, I probably enjoy communicating with because otherwise they wouldn't really be my buds, right? So, uh, don't forget though about who they know and who we're going to be able to touch through the communication plan, right? Really important stuff. So, here's my thing is five, every five years, is that anybody think that's not true? It's, it's longer than that. People don't move every five years. Anybody think that? You think it's longer? Perfect. Anybody think it's way longer? Yeah. Seven. Perfect. Seven? Sometimes. Twelve. Perfect. Anybody think it's shorter than five years? Great. Right. Because everyone's different, guys. There's no right or wrong answer here, right? So let's just say, because I looked at that and I was like, five years? Man, that's, that seems really, that seems like a lot. I've been doing mortgages for 13 years, and I'm like, I don't see people flipping over every five years, do I? So it's like, ah, that might be, let's just back it out. So let's say every 10 years. That means... There's only 15 people in your immediate community, right? They're going to be they're going to be moving each year. Let's just say we can convert 50%. So now you're talking seven and a half deals, somewhere between 22,000 and 112,000 in GCI on that, just by communicating with that. Don't forget about who they know. So I'm just thinking, check this out. You got 150 people that you know, 150 people that they know, and this is that number that we get to in the book, in the workshop that Michael Mayer had. That's uh, 22,500 people. And you're like, wow, that's staggering. 
But is anybody communicating regularly with their 150 people, let alone finding really cool, innovative, relevant ways to communicate and have them share ideas and communicate with their people? So check this out. You got 4,500 people moving every single year. That's just on that 20% mobility rate, okay? Of course, 9,000 potential transactions, but I look at that and I'm like, is anybody thinking like, ah, oh, I'm not gonna get two sides of every deal, right? Now with a plan, you might get a lot more. With a system in place that you execute, you might get a lot more double-sided transactions. Um, but let's just take that one side. 20% mobility rate. So let's just say that first one, they're moving every five years. You got 4,500 people moving each year in your existing community. And let's just say you only convert 10%. Because now, guys, we're talking about not just your 150, but their 150. We're talking about that 22,500 number, right, that we've access to. Just 10% of those people, again, you got a plan, so you're going out there and you're kicking it with your plan. You got 450 deals. Anybody close 450 deals last year? Last year and the year before? The last three years? The last five years? Okay, so 450 deals we have access to converting only 10%. If your average price is 100,000, you're at 1.35 million in GCI. Anybody made a million dollars yet in one year in real estate, honestly? Okay, so let's just not even bother because those numbers are really big. Are those numbers really big to anybody? Yes. Yeah. So let's just back it off. Don't forget, I think they know them. Those numbers can be bigger. So let's say your, your mobility rate is 10%. So people are moving every 10 years because some people are like, well, five, seven, well, more like 10. Joe's like, well, my people might be more like 12. So at 10 years, you have 22,500 people moving each year, right? Convert only 10%, you have 225 deals. Anybody in the room close 225 deals last year? Okay, so uh, 675,000 GCI, if your average price is 100,000, up to 3.37 at 500,000. Pretty big numbers. So what's the problem? Is the problem that those are really big numbers, or there's not enough sales, or well, the market's not moving, well, there's no inventory, those are all valid, valid reasons. Or we can say, dang, but even if I don't get those big numbers, I don't really have a communication plan. I am randomly communicating, which probably means you're randomly getting introductions and leads and deals, or you're chasing leads. So check this out. Say that mobility rate's only 5% each year. People are moving uh, only one time every 20 years. Is that safe to say people are gonna move once every 20 years? So that's 1,125 people moving every single year in your community already. All you gotta do is find a way to communicate with them. And at $100,000 purchase price, you're at 336,000 GCI, up to 500,000, you're at 1.68 million GCI. And don't forget, now you have a communication plan in place and now you're communicating with a lot more people, right? Numbers are really, really important. So here's my thing. I just want the social proof. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, geez, what's gonna happen when I'm sitting in front of Rob and Rob's got his arms crossed and he's like, that's a bunch of BS, man. Those numbers are big numbers. I'm talking about making a million bucks a year. Who is this guy talking? And I look like I'm 22, but I'm, I'm 35. <laughs> so who is this guy? I'm walking out of here. So I asked a few real estate agents that do a pretty good amount of business. What's the average how often your clients move for buy or sell? And this was just over the weekend that I asked them this. So Tim Kaiser, Heidi Fortin, they do a pretty good amount of transactions every year, year in, year out. Exactly what to reply back, the average is three to five years, period. They happen to be over in Palm Harbor. I asked Jeff Borum over at Calvin Williams, pretty good producer. Three years, I'm flipping people from first home to move up buyers a lot these days. Well, I don't have move up buyers, Brian. I'm dealing with all you know people that are retired. Okay, your numbers are gonna be different. But they might be bigger than a first time buyer. Guy's got a communication plan in place, right? Uh, Manuela Woodrum, ask her, every three to five years with the military. I think she's in that next room doing the military thing right now, but her, her, her clientele are a lot of military people. So obviously it's good for her. Now there were some agents, there's a, an agent uh, friend of ours that's um, with Remax and she said, you know, I just, it just seems like it's a lot longer these days. There's an agent that's down in South St. Pete um, and she's like, gosh, that's a really good question. Um, she gets asked to come in and speak at her company and share stuff, she's a good producer. And she's like, honestly, I've never, I've never tracked it. That's a really good question. So I'm waiting to hear back from her on her numbers. Um, there is an agent out by the beaches at Century 21 that's like, you know, my clients are just totally different. They're like, I haven't, I think she's been in business for six years. She's like, I haven't really seen the turnover, so I'm still waiting. Uh, there's a, a really big agent with Bob's company that's one of the top uh, 100 reels, top 100 in Pinellas County. 
and she deals with a lot of high-end stuff on the beaches. And she just said, yeah, I just, I've been in business for, I think it's nine years. And it's just a little bit different. When we, she was at our uh, Monday night workshop we did. And she looked at this and she's like, you know, mine is, is a lot longer period because I might deal with somebody that's going to retire on the beach and they're going to sell when they die is really how it's going to work out. But she's like, it all averages out because I'm doing bigger deals. So you throw those numbers up there. You get a plan. And she popped in here this morning, and I'm going to show you some of her stuff by implementing this just this week that she took away from Monday night. There's a top 100 agent in this county on the board here at Pro, and she took this stuff and started to implement it, and like she's kicking it, right? So uh, clearly there's potential. Clearly we need to have a plan, and we have to be persistent and consistent with our plan. So, so Michael Mayer talks about this. Everybody know what this is? Anybody not seen it? Okay. Okay. Um, we are looking to work with people that are not just our clients, but people that are champion and ambassadors for us, and, and that's really the referral zone. So a couple quick things, you know, not all contacts hold equal database value. So here it's really clear. It's not that people hold different value. It's they hold different database value in my business, right? Big difference. I mean, I love people and I value people. And, you know, I've gotten to a point in my life, in my business where, man, people matter. They matter more than my commissions, more than business, but they hold different database value, right? So you got new versus old relationships. So just realize who's got a database of 200 people that are past clients, no, past clients. So Michael, you got past clients, 200 people. Is it safe to say that when you start and in, in, do you have a communication plan that is executable, that's delivering, that's just replicatable that you're kicking right now? Mediocre. Uh, Mediocre. Thanks, Renox. Pretty good producer in the room there. So, is it safe to say that the people that you did a closing for four years ago that you didn't really have a over-the-top communication plan with, it might be a little weird for them to all of a sudden jump to a nine and ten and start like because they haven't been really incubated in that system, right? Versus you're going to walk out of here, you meet somebody today, and there's going to be a bunch of you that are going to do something completely differently than the first person you talk with today. That person is going to have a much different experience than the person four years ago, right? So we have a thing on our team. It's called it's called Strive. It's one word: S T R I V E. Man, we're not perfect. We're going to mess some stuff up. But man, if you can't strive to do better, that's when we got a problem. So that's the idea: is you just strive to get better, right, every day. So check this out: changing old people, even old clients, even old clients that love you and have a, have had a good experience. It might be a lot, difficult, a lot more difficult moving somebody from a 7 to a 10 than it will somebody from a 0 to a 10 with your new system and your new plan in place, right? Does that make sense? Uh, so creating your database, you guys have all seen this. A plus is an ambassador, someone that sent you two plus referrals in the last 12 months. Do you have an A, somebody that's referred you somebody ever? Um, and it doesn't matter how it landed. And then you also have, uh, anybody ever lent somebody money? Like, have, I let you 20 bucks, 100 bucks, $10,000. Yeah, didn't land well. It wasn't very positive. It wasn't a positive. <laughs> oh, yes. I that means I got it back. All right. That's right. Okay. So, uh, so, so who's lent somebody more than $1,000? Okay, so, so Lee, so uh, tell me what, why you lent that person 1000 bucks. What do you feel about that person? Trust them? Did you trust them? Not entirely, but it's a professional situation where I'm Okay, so you kind of had to, kind of forced into it? Okay. So we're not going to get this as an accounting thing here about lending money. <laughs> Full disclosure, don't lend money, apparently. Unless you, unless you, somebody gave you great advice. Don't lend it unless you plan on giving it back. So, like, my cousin called me in, in a, a different state, like, you know, in a bind, and my wife's like, you know, you're not going to get the money back. I was like, I know, but you know what? I'm blessed enough that I'm in a situation that. I can lend money and don't expect it back. And guess who never got that money back? That's why you're 35. Talk, I'm 47. I'll talk to you. I, I, I've been there now. That's right. I've got wisdom beyond. Hey, I give you five bucks to grab a sandwich on the way out of here. So, so if you have lent somebody money or somebody has lent you money, it's that, that's different. So in here, you know, your people that are like A's, if they've ever lent you money, they trust you enough. They like you enough. They're in some situation enough to where they would lend you money. That could also be somebody that's an A. Michael Mayer talks about that. I don't think it's in the book, but he talks about that like offline. That's a great, great point. Because if I'm going to lend Jackie money, I don't expect to get it back, but I'm like, I, 
I know her, like her, trust her, care about her enough to lend her money, I'd probably refer a client over to her, right? Uh, B is a potential champion, you don't know yet. And we're gonna hammer those, because those are that's an awesome people that have a whole bunch of contacts in that in that list there. Family and friends. Anybody have a family or friend that's never given you a referral? Like your best friend, like your mom, like your yep. that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, and then you got D's who are no referrals, but drip only. So you can delete them, but I'm just telling you, every week we get people that refer us business. That call us up that are on that are on our drip. And eventually a year later, something changes in life and boom, we get a deal. So it's like one of these, like, you know, we get a whole bunch of referrals. You can just get them like the one from here, one from there, one from there, and you never it doesn't cost you more money to have people in the email campaign. But we're gonna talk about email a little bit more thoroughly. You're not in the real estate business, I'm not in the mortgage business, we are in the communicate with our database business, 100 percent It's a given that we have to be awesome at our trade. Right? You have to you have to be amazing at real estate. I have to be awesome at mortgages. You have to be awesome at delivering great title and insurance at CFP at whatever industry you're in or your, your friends are in. The mindset of database. That makes sense? Everyone got it? We can move on? Perfect. Um, don't forget that yellow sheet of paper. Big aha, uh, your first thing, and then one word. I want you to keep that in mind, all right? On that yellow sheet of paper. So, database systems. So, we've got a CRM and we've got an email system. Two totally different things, right? So who's got like a CRM, like a real like a database? Who's got a CRM? John in the back, Michael. So that's safe to say you guys, other people do not have a CRM. Who does not have a CRM, a computer system, CRM? Okay. And then what about email? Who's got a, an email platform? Um, like yep. Email campaign, like you, you can mass email people without getting constant contact. Or... Yeah, constant contact, bomb bomb, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Mailchimp, yeah. all that. Okay, Lee, you had a question. No, no, something like that. that. That is very clear. That's not a CRM, right? I'm not, a, I'm not an IT guy, but has anybody tried to, in Outlook, go put in uh, people's birth dates, put if they're a mother or father to send them a Father's Day card, and then try and extract a report from Outlook that just gives you those fields? I tried. It's really hard. Uh, you know, if you want to write his name down, well, whatever. Tom Scaglione is, is huge at the other association in town. And uh, Tom's a crazy techie guy. He could probably show you how to do all that stuff, but for the common guy like me, I, that's not a CRM in my book, and it's not an email platform, right? Now, Gmail's done a lot of stuff, but it's not. We're going to show you some way better stuff than that. But there's two different things, okay? Sometimes they can be integrated. So, like, top producer, maybe. I, I don't know because I don't use it. Um, that might send out email, but there's going to be a lot of restrictions on it, right? We're going to show you some of that stuff. So, so, uh, Michael, you've got a CRM you use. So what I'd like to know is uh, the system name, three pros and cons. I don't need three cons, but just give me a couple. This is why I use it. Hey, this is some drawbacks to it. And then what does it cost? Realty job alert. Okay. And the system. Uh, pros, it was designed by three big producing agents. California developed specific four agents. Um, so What's it called, Michael? Realty juggler. Realty oh, juggler. Okay. You might want to write that down. And it's it's so similar to top producer, but it has got a much shorter learning curve. Yeah. And there's some killer tutorials. The videos are made for lay people, not tech people. Um, so that's another pro on it. The cons, it's still required. You've got to input, you can import, but anything new, you've still got to categorize. So there's a little bit of data input challenge, but it's super simple. They got the app on your iPhone. You can you can do it a bunch of different ways. Awesome. And the cost is, well, if you sign up, it's full free access for 90 days. No credit card on file, nothing. Get it. And it's a full function system. If you like it at the end of 90 days, it's 99 bucks a year. I'm sorry, $99 a, a year. year. Okay. As opposed to how much for top producer. And it does virtually everything. And then the other part is if you sign up and now you get people to sign up underneath you, which Michael Lauer is <laughs> But every person who signs up, I think you get a one month credit for next year. So it's, it's a self feeding machine. Cool. Uh, so somebody that was in the room, I don't know if it was Orlando or if it was Monday, Monday night, but um, they said you can actually get more than three months for free. You just call up and you ask, I want more for free. I mean, the point is for 99 bucks, geez, stroke the check and get out of there. You know what I mean? Let's go do it. Uh, who else? Joe, you got what you were telling me about. 
You got to go on Joe's page and see his killer photograph of him back in like the 70s at, in California. That was amazing. I couldn't pick out which one was you, though. That was amazing. That's awesome. So, Joe, what system do you use? Uh, top producer. Top producer? Um, I mean, it is a lot more expensive than what you just talked about. I think it's $35 a month. I'm sorry, $35 a month? Have you ever gotten a deal closed just out of that CRM? Like just by using it and staying in touch through it? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. You make more than 35 bucks. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, and the thing I like about it is they just added this a while back, but it syncs with the Gmail account. Got it. So, you know, when you're sending out an email to a client or whatever, it syncs it so it automatically goes into your database and you're not actually going back into your database and just adding up a bunch of notes back in there. That's cool. So I kind of like that. Yeah. Um, it does. You do have the ability to um, develop your own um, uh, uh, campaign if you want. Customize them. Customize them, you know, for like a, a listing campaign or um, a contract campaign or whatever you want, just to keep yourself off track. Uh, and you can send out mass emails. Cool. Up to how many? Do you know? I think it's unlimited. Okay. You know, Jim, we use it for our, that's our email platform mostly. Yeah. Right? How many do we send out at a time sometimes? Yeah, I do 1,500, but I can, I've gotten up to about 25, but it sometimes fails at that's about not 25. A day. That's just no, no, not per day. I'm saying on one blast, like a group. Right, in a day, we just send out 20,000? Oh, I, I, that just keeps going. I can yeah. send out as much as I want. I just gotta, but I'm saying when I create an email and I, I connect the amount of agents in there, I, can, I usually keep it around 15, keeps it clean, and it'll go off to those 1,500. And then I started, I do, I just copy and paste that next one. Or, you know, I have that same template for anything to bring up, and I do the next 1,500 agents. But I go through, like, you know, I go through, like, all of Tampa Bay Area, 25,000. I don't think it's an unlimited amount. They don't send it all out at once. No. It goes, no, 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 each one of those goes out. I, I, I'm on all of those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Right. But I need they, to write them down, because that, that's how they get around the yeah. spam filter. Yeah, they tell you you get 24 hours is a guarantee that they'll send it out, but it usually goes out in a couple minutes because I get them all. So anybody not have a, a killer CRM right now? Some people go to Excel. If you don't have MS Office, go buy MS Office. You are going to need it. You're not going to succeed if you don't have MS Office, right? That's Word, Excel, all that kind of stuff. Don't put it in Excel. Right, here's, let, me, let me step in here. Uh, Michael, first of all, we're hearing a lot of deals for Juggler right now. Mm -hmm. One of my agents in Jacksonville jumped all over uh, deals for Juggler and told me about it months ago. I've never used it myself, but the cost and everything else, people are swearing by it. I'm also still a top producer. Why? Because I've invested all this time and information in there, right? So it's hard to you know break it. And they know that. Speaking of that, Excel. Load your stuff in Excel. Why? Realty Juggler, you can drop everything from your Excel spreadsheet, set, turn it into a comma-separated value, and dump it into Realty Juggler or Top Producer or any other place. Right now, you can just download your databases from GD or another exchange into an Excel spreadsheet. Because you need to protect that data when they cut it off. You intended always, that magic date, right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, if that's your I'm contact not. management software right now, is your ML exchange? You better get it out of there because you're going to lose it all. It's all going to go away. Get into Excel, and every time you add, add to Excel. Why? You don't want to be a slave to, I'm paying 35 bucks a month to top producer, but all my stuff's in there. I don't want Realty Juggler, hey, three months free, 90 days free. I imported all my data, and now they say, time to pay. Well, I found something cheaper, but I got everything invested into I've already put everything in. If you just put it all in Excel, you can't be held hostage. Right, all your data is there. You can just dump it as you go. All right, just I, I'm just telling you, start with Excel and then dump. All right, every time you add, add to Excel and dump. So your database is always current in Excel, and you can port it anywhere you want to go. Realty Juggler, they get a million clients. Hey, you know what? Psych. Now it's hundred bucks a month. What are you gonna do? All your data is there. Go for it. Pull it all out. Well, agents who are here said, okay, I will pull it all out. Thank you very much, because it's in Excel. I'm just going to go dump it to the guy who's still 100 bucks a year. So, sorry. Fair no, it's great. Yeah, so uh, I guess that's something else you should probably put on your to-do list is export 
from your yeah. MLS. Yeah. The benefit of showing up live, because we didn't yeah. talk about that in the webinar. Because the port over into uh, um, Matrix does not pull all the details that you may have uh, on your client. Got it. Thanks for sharing. I have a question, Brenner. Yeah. Will we be able to put those contact into the Matrix? Yes, and it, it's got basic contact information already. If you go into Matrix, you'll see your current contact in there, but it doesn't have all the same data fields that they don't have purposely. Yeah. So if you can save it into an Excel spreadsheet, you'll have the information. You'll be able to cut and paste it back in there. Can you import from Excel into Matrix? Perfect. Yeah, so export it from the old, get it in Excel, import it into the new with Excel. Save you a lot of time. Excel is a great tool to start with. Yep, you're good. Okay. Um, can I let everyone know that it's also open office, which is completely free? Cool. And you can download that, and it's the same as Microsoft Office, so you can yep. save everything as a uh, Word file. And it works the same way, mm -hmm. and it's free. Video. So you don't have to pay for it in Excel. Awesome. And you get a free Google account, you can use Google Drive, and they have a live. A live Excel file in there as well. So there's a bunch of different options. So, okay. So, which database CRM system? Is that a good question to ask a whole bunch of realtors to find out if you're using the best one, if Realty Juggler is good, if Top Producer is good? Does anybody need to invest into a CRM like soon? Mm -hmm. So, here's my thing I think that's a killer question to ask. And I'd want to know, not for me, because I use Salesforce. It's like a, a BMW, but it's more specific. It costs a bunch of money, although. An agent on Monday night said, that's not a lot of money. I, I thought, what are 1,200, 1,300 bucks is a lot, plus 1,500 bucks to have somebody set it up. I thought that was a lot, but it's, uh, it's not a lot for some people. So here's what I did. Tampa Bay Real Estate Agents page on Facebook. Anybody remember that? Killer group page. They have uh, 620 members, so I'm like, well, this is a great thing to go post in there. They're all love local to Tampa. So I go post. Uh, that You can join that group, facebook.com slash group slash Tampa Bay Realtors. Uh, you got it to close group, but they'll give you access. Which database CRM system should we use? For those of you who use a CRM, like Top Producer, Market Leader, Act, et cetera, what's the name we use? How long? Same questions we just went through. And uh, we got three people that reply back. Uh, sales Driver, free through Realty Direct. Anybody with Realty Direct in the room? Uh, business Builder, free through CT1, easy to use. Da, 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 da. Beth Becker, she's an awesome agent uh, over on by the beach. Anybody at Century 21? Perfect. Uh, Joe Elmer, top producer, five years pros. You can sync it with your Gmail account, thirty-five dollars a month. Ooh, that's Joe back in the back. Sure. Yeah, check out his picture. Check out his picture. So here's my point. I'm like, dang it. Well, I'm not realty direct. I'm not C21. Okay, so I got top producer. I already freaking knew about top producer. Oh, that didn't really help me, right? So uh, only three people. Two of them are my comments. Doesn't really help. So I post the same thing. Which database CRM system? The exact same thing. Uh, me and my buddies have created this agent mastermind group. There's 7,000 members, actually 7,054 as of this week, um, all across the country. And uh, exact same post. I just copied and pasted it. And uh, we got we got a decent amount of replies back on this. And um, this was a while. Actually, I think it was yesterday. So there's a whole bunch more. Uh, it was 20 plus replies back on it. And here's what they all came back with. Oh, that's free access for you too. You go to uh, facebook.com slash groups slash agent mastermind and you can get access into this group. Are you guys a part of the private group yet? Anybody part of this group? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, let me know on my personal Facebook page. You go to facebook.com slash brian.heckman.18. Just put on here after you request access to this, because they we got you with our admin and keep you access. Just put on my Facebook page. I just requested free access to your private agent mastermind group. And I'll make sure you, that you get expedited to get in there and check it out. Just, it's totally free, guys. There's no, it's agents. It's a community for agents. So there's not going to be people poaching you and hitting you up for business. It's agents sharing stuff with agents. Just that one thread alone is probably worth you getting in just to check this one topic alone, which you'll be able to search for my name and you'll be able to see that stuff. Here's what all the top ones come back as. Well, one sec. So top producer, market leader, point two. But it's all sorts of these things like Realty Juggler comes up all the time. I'll tell you what we heard the most in these trainings this week. Realty Juggler, um, there was another one, uh, all clients came up, Wise Agent, we're starting to hear a bunch more of. Um, but yeah, pros and cons, all this stuff. So there's a great platform for you. Um, the answer is it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter, just use one, right? 
Um, me personally, if I was going to do it just in the room, what we've heard this week, it seems like top producer and realty juggler are the two that come up most regularly. So, uh, Lee, do you have a question? Um, I'm just trying to touch your Facebook. Uh, okay. <laughs> Brian. Uh, Brian.hecton.1 me. If you're not already connected with me on Facebook, and then just put, hey, I requested access so that I know and I can get that over to people. So I just put the same thing for the email system now. Uh, which email system? Because email systems are different. And, um, and, there's, and there's, I just did this a while back on the Tampa Real Estate Agent page. And you know, constant contact, high contact, no chip, bomb bomb, target hero. It doesn't really matter. And these are more like constant contact. You can send out, you know, blast people out, uh, whatever, a billion a day or whatever it is. Um, those are it's a separate format though. Hey, it'd be really beneficial if your CRM were to like operate in sync with an email platform, right? So like Salesforce, pretty amazing database system. I can only send out a thousand emails in a day. So just my customer database, past client database, prospect database, I can't even send emails out. I add in real estate agents, insurance agents, financial planners, stuff like that to help them grow their business. Can't even send that out on the same day. So I can't send stuff from Salesforce all in one batch, right? So I got a quick question real quick for the uh, Michael. You're the first building juggler that's actually I've talked to that's using it. Can you have an email platform? Yeah. 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 User friendly and can you send out get some spam files? filters? I have a little assistant who does all the technical implementation, right. but she said it, it was yeah. very user friendly and it's getting through it's not it's getting it's labeled as spam and all that stuff. I think it's unlimited as well. They okay. have the automatic the whole opt in for first time recipients and all that. Perfect. He's right. I use the first two juggler for years. Uh -huh. I'm just going to buy the same tomorrow after my phone. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, real estate juggler does sync with your Gmail account or any of your customers. And yes, and it can do all of the things that all of the other ones. I, when I worked for another real estate processing or short sales, I researched all of them. Right. And I chose real estate juggler because it was the best for the money. And it did the most. And they upgrade all the time. You can call them and tell them what you want. That you want new features, and they'll actually do them. And I, I don't know. My suggestion is, uh, if Joe's already got top producer, I, I think it's a waste of time for Joe to switch over and try and figure. Hey, it works for him. Rock and roll. If you're starting out, pick one of those two and go. Seems like that's the two that always get replied back. But and it's cool as you come to these environments. You have access to these internet pages on Facebook where you can ask questions and clearly you see people reply. You're gonna shake that. So, got it? Database systems, we good? Don't forget about the yellow sticky note. Really want to really, really share this. This is some of the most powerful stuff that we've gotten feedback from anyway, from other agents um, that get out of these workshops. So we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna start and go implement right now. Um, and we're gonna either start or we're gonna refine your 150, okay? So what information we gather when we get the stuff from people? We, we're gonna grade them, because remember all contacts in our database have a different database value, right? We're going to get their first name, last name, email, cell, address, birthday, and their by date. And you can download a free template that's on Excel at tinyurl.com slash Excel database. So if you don't already have one of these, you can grab one of those there. Um, here's what it'll look like. Pretty simple. It's just that stuff in Excel, right? You can import it into a Google Drive or whatnot. So, uh, so that's that. So generally, there's like five types of contacts overall. So I, now I'm gonna, I want you to start thinking, OK? Past months. New leads and prospects, sphere of influence, residents in the farm area, local business owners. And I'm sure you're going to start brainstorming a whole bunch more people, and I'm going to give you some crazy resources. But right now, I just want you to think of, like, in general, these five. So in every single room that we have on our webinars, this is, we have advanced agents that already have a database. Joe, I'd probably guess you're probably an advanced agent. You've already got top producer. You've been using it for how long? Five years. Five years, you probably have more than 150 contacts in there, right? So Joe's problem is not that he needs to build 150 people, it's that I got too many people that I'm not communicating with, probably. So I want to make sure, Bob wants to make sure, Jim wants to make sure that when somebody like Joe shows up here, that we make it worth his while. So we got to communicate with Joe, and Joe might have a different little six-minute workshop here than somebody who is just needing to get their 150 people. Anybody have their 150 that... Like, I got my rock solid 150 that's already set up in my campaigns. And so, is anybody, would anybody say that they're not yet an advanced agent? Not yet an advanced agent. Perfect. Look at McDougal back there. Come on. 
So it's quality over quantity. So the biggest thing is most agents walk in and they've never heard this stuff. They've never gone through this stuff. Shame on their butt. And they're thinking they're here. But I mean, you have 150 people that are going to refer you business and more importantly, know how to introduce you and refer you. And if you don't, then maybe this little exercise over here is going to be a little more helpful, right? But again, there's agents that come in and they're like, dude, I, I got it. My problem is, and this could be Joe. Joe's like, dude, I got this database for five years. I've been working it. We get agents that come back and they have great response on this stuff because they, Joe needs help with a little bit different. Right? Yeah, so if you're. You have 150 following people that you feel like. Right. I've had like 1,500 in my database. And I've had what we're talking about probably 30. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah that's. That's wisdom right there, and that's why you show up to these things, you know? So and for the advanced time, next time is we're going to work on how to, we're going to cold those down, we're going to work on grading those people and get them there, right? Recognize who the 30 are, start working on them, but then how do we work on them? Next one, we're going to really work on the communication plan to go there, and look, you know what, here's my goal for this this month, I'm going to add three. Yep. So I'm going to go from 30 to 33. Yep. All right, and then, you know, go from there. Great question. Great question. So, uh, so if you're an advanced agent, and you will get to this point too, you got to kind of always like be nurturing your database. You got to pay attention to it. I used to use an app database, and uh, my wife used to make fun of me because I'd be sitting on Saturday and early in the morning, and I'm like working on my database. She's like, "What were you up so early for?" She wanted to snuggle with me, I think, in the morning. And so, uh, so my wife was working on the database, and she used to make fun of me about database, the database. And then you know, I just here's what I didn't have: just being very transparent. I did not have the ideas that I have now, I did not have the inspiration, the people, the community to basically tell me, no, I think you're not a freak for working so hard in your database. That's where it's at. And I did not have the implementation help that I do now in my life and in my business. So that app database just went to nothing, I don't know, probably like six years ago. And so now I'm kind of like, dang. I mean, I, you know, in our business, you transfer over from company to company in a mortgage business and like all the loan systems are different. So if you don't really have a system to export this and I control it, which means I pay for it and I have to invest the time and the money into setting it up, you lose it. Happens a lot, right? So um, if you're an advanced agent or when you get to this point, you're always you're gonna have to grade 25 A's and figure out who are these people that start, you know, they were a B, now they're an A, they just refer to somebody. You're gonna have to downgrade 25, whether that's an A plus, and they have not sent you more than two deals in the last year. We're going to show you how to do that, not just just downgrade, but talk to them first, meet with them, and find out why. Uh, you might have add 25 Bs, which is those people that you don't know yet, people that you meet at the chamber of fun functions, the leads group stuff, at church, at you know wherever, right? So let's grab that piece of paper, and we have the asterisk on that says people matter. We're going to spend really good, guys. This is really good. We're going to spend six minutes, but don't check your email. I, I really, the way you're going to benefit most from this is if Brian Tracy, I think, says, don't go take your notes on your computer, but put it on a sheet of paper, spend 30 minutes when you're done, and transpose all that stuff that's handwritten on a piece of paper onto your computer because you're going to absorb more of it and you're going to implement more of it. Brian Tracy, I don't know, smarter than I am. Because I just, I hate paper, but same um, first name. Though. Same first name. <laughs> so, here we go, ready? That blank sheet of paper, six minutes. The first name that comes to mind, first name, last name, both, I don't care, initials, it doesn't matter. Don't think about it, the first name that comes to mind, okay? So, the happiest person you know, write down the happiest person that you know. First name or last name, happiest person you know. They can be borderline annoying happy, that's okay. The best marriage that you know, 
You can write down the husband's name, the wife's name, both their names, their last name. The best marriage you know. It could be an 80 year marriage, it could be a two day marriage. Be able to revisit that again later and see if they're still happy after two days. The happiest person you know in your neighborhood. So this is the guy or gal that's always freaking waving at you with that big old grin when they're driving behind the car, walking their dog with a cup of coffee in the morning. You don't even know their name, maybe, but you know the dog's name. We have a bunch of those in our neighborhood. A small business owner that you know? That could be uh, a florist. That could be uh, the guy that owns a 7-Eleven. Any kind of small business. Someone who loves to play golf or watch golf. They don't have to be good at it. I'm not. Someone likes to play golf. The guy or gal that always knows when the Masters is on. I always got to check in on Sunday afternoon and find out who's winning. Someone who tells the best jokes. And this really could be two. This could be clean jokes and, and dirty jokes. So you really could have two people here. There's a buddy of mine, Brian, that uh, does stand up comedy as a hobby, believe it or not. And it's all clean. It's amazing. He's the only guy that does these little things, and we went to see him once, and it was everybody's at this, at that. He's all clean jokes. Him was really funny. Most driven person that you know. Most driven person you know. Someone that sends emails at you know midnight, and then two thirty, and then three thirty, and then five o'clock, and it's like they never sleep. Most driven person you know. Who's a high energy person that you know? High energy person that you know. Who's the most social person that you know? Social butterfly, friends with everybody, always trying to invite people to parties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the best networker that you know? That person that walks into a room, grabs everybody's name, makes you feel like they're your best bud from high school, walks out of there with 18 business cards of people and already appointment scheduled. The best networker that you know? The best salesperson you know, doesn't have to be in real estate, the best salesperson you know, they just make you feel awesome. They just make you want to do business with them. You look at them and they're like, that's just, just American pie right there. Just a good old guy or gal. Best salesperson. An insurance agent that you recommend? And you know what? Maybe you listen to the three or four agents that you know. Because you probably haven't talked with them in a while. But you're about to. A real estate attorney that you know? Real estate attorney that you know? A general attorney that you know? That could be family, could be commercial, law, whatever. General attorney that you know? A CPA or an accountant that you know? All right, halfway there. You're going to take us six minutes. A financial planner. Could be a CFP or a financial planner, but not your CPA. Make somebody different. Let's do some work here. The financially wealthiest person that you know. They don't have to be happy. They might not be happy, but financially the wealthiest person that you know. An entrepreneur. Doesn't have to be a successful entrepreneur. They could be somebody that fails at 20 businesses. An entrepreneur that you know. The most committed person to a charity. The most committed person to a charity that you know. Don't think about it, guys. Just write it down. No right or wrong answer. You know, you're not these people. Not right now. That's right. Guys, these are awesome now. The last six. The best, uh, the biggest pet lover you know. Man, you could break this down into like how many different pets? Dog owners, cat lovers, lizard lovers. <laughs> Snakes, rabbits now for Brian Hackman. Shh. <laughs> Sucker. We have Easter. You. My rescue dog finally died of old age. I was at a very weak moment, and my nine-year-old begged me to have a bunny rabbit. If anybody wants a bunny rabbit, just. No, you want to know something funny? That's why I was late. The bunny got out. My uh, daughter has a bunny, and I chased him all around the neighborhood. <laughs> so, so wait a minute. So wait a minute. So you're saying there's a chance that you might take my bunny home? <laughs> it's not my fun. No. Uh, two bunny and Katie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> oh no, because you have to fix bunnies, by the way. I learned that too. Oh, so. that doesn't cost anything. No, oh no, yeah. Hmm. Highest corporate level executive that you know. The highest corporate level executive that you know. Man, the bunnies got us off. Now we gotta raise the finish. Highest corporate level executive that you know. Guys, huge companies here. Bright House, uh, Raymond James, you name it. Huge companies in town here. FDA, the Home Shopping Network. It doesn't have to be midtown. Anybody, it doesn't matter. Three people in, I'm sorry, highest level HR professional that you know. Highest level HR professional that you know. HR generalist, HR manager, HR director. Three people in huge corporate companies that you know. Huge corporate companies, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Tech Data, anything. Locally, not locally, doesn't matter. First ones that come to mind. Someone who is most involved in a local church. Someone most involved in a local church. Hopefully they're a good guy or a good gal. Someone on the board of a community charity association. Someone on the board of a community charity association. We're done. So in six minutes, we've just gone through. And has anybody not added 25 people? Show of hands. Awesome. How many people did you add? More than 10? 19. 19. Six minutes. It's not about failing or not meeting the task. You got 19 more names that you didn't have when you walked in here, right? That's really awesome. That's only 25 people. So the next 25 names, as an idea, it's actually 26 names, just go through the alphabet, A through Z. You can do this first names and then last names, you can get double that, or you can just go through and race through it. But in six minutes, Bob might go grab a coffee and sit and do this. I would probably grab a cold beer or a glass of red wine, and for six minutes, I would chug my beer and I would write down names. I wouldn't really, but. <laughs> so, uh, Here's another awesome resource for you. Michael Mayer, you can go to tinyurl.com slash 150refine, and you can grab a memory jogger that Michael has through his book. And this thing is six pages long, and has, you name it, you're gonna have people all over your database. They're gonna be added that, again, guys, here's the cool thing about this, is that it's not, uh, it's not people you're about to call, cold call, and ask them and solicit them for business, because that would be really not cool, right? It's just people that you're going to communicate with. Just being really transparent. Like I have uh, my brother and his family live in Colorado. So I've got a 11 year old and a thing, no, 12 year old and nine year old and 10 year old nephews. And I just, my communication with them is very random. So my communication with leads is freaking stellar. My communication with my own family, it's kind of random. It's kind of embarrassing, but you know, that's kind of the way it is. It's far away and it's not easy. So it doesn't necessarily, and what you guys can find is this whole thing is way bigger than just closing commissions and closing real estate. It's got a way bigger impact on your personal life and your business as well. So that's an awesome resource for you. But don't forget to write down big aha, first thing, and one word. All right, keep that stuff in mind as we're going through this. So, uh, so we're going to go and implement now what the heck do we do with these people, right? What's our first call look like? What the heck do we say to these people, right? So the goal of the first call pressure's all gone here. Just check this out. All your goal is, is to reconnect with them. Joe, you got 1,500 people. When's the last time you called and went through all those 1,500 people? Once a year? Okay. <laughs> Confirm their cell phone. No, you're not going to ask them if that is their cell phone number because you are calling their cell phone. So just by calling them, you're going to confirm if it's their number or not, right? And we're going to get their mail address. And yes, that's like snail mail and Pony Express style, covered wagon, USPS, mailing address, right? Way more important than their email address. So some of you guys are twitching right now because I don't have email address in here. But we're going to get the email in a way better strategy. I'm going to show you a couple minutes. So big picture what to talk about is, is again, we're going to give, uh, so I was out in California and there was a, a presentation speaking class. Awesome, awesome guy. And um, he, he said the quote that structure creates freedom. So if we have some structure in what we're going to call about, like what's the purpose of my call? If we have structure, we have a lot of freedom, and it just takes all the stress off. Like anybody have call reluctance? Yeah. Like God, what the heck? I had a call. It's just, it's gone. 
dude, all, all we're doing is just reconnecting with the guy. I'm going to give you some scripts of what to talk about. You're going to validate his email addresses there, check it off the list. You're going to grab his mail address. You're going to hang up. It's really easy stuff. Who's done that in their whole database in the last year? Yeah. Who did it? So we're going to start off the family recreation occupation goals. Family occupation recreation goals. Right? That's what we're looking for. Every time, really. Every time. So for advanced agents, here's what we're getting towards. I'm going to get you this. Don't write the script down. I'm going to get to it. Are you the chosen one script from Michael Mayer's book that we talked about? Check this out. Hey, I was just curious if you had a friend or neighbor who was looking to buy or sell their home, who would you recommend they call first? Probably a really important thing to ask, right? Mom, it's not me. <laughs> so there's only four responses. A friend or a relative, another agent, you, or I'm not sure. Fair? There really isn't anything else. That's it. There's only four answers. Knowing where you stand in this is always better than trying to figure it out. Does anybody know with their contacts if they're the one or not? It's pretty awesome. You just go through the system, right? Now, you're not going to call them on the first time and ask them this immediately. I just want you to know that's, that's the end game. That's the end result. So there, step in there too. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the best place to do that, are you the chosen one script? Is a one on one. Yeah. Face to face, eyeball to eyeball, breath to breath. Okay? That's the best place. You need your biggest bang for the buck. Because Brian's going to talk about it in a minute because it's a little uneasy against there, right? There, it, uh, it's kind of, you know, okay, especially if it's not you, right. right? You're not trying to psychologically make him say it to you when it's not you, but there's just some, some psychology that's behind all this and why Michael Mayer teaches it in, in his stuff. So, Rarely, first of all, Brian's right, it's not going to be the first call. You haven't talked to somebody in a year and a half. All right, you're not going to call them and say, hey, how are things going? By the way, you have a friend looking, you know, that sells, that's like way, that's, I don't know, just sales 101 that needs to be thrown out the door, maybe negative 101. Right, so just make, make sure you know that. Just go, hey, man, I haven't talked to you in a while. The other thing, in Michael's, either in his book or in his seminar, he says this. We are afraid to call these people because we haven't talked to them in 18 months, right? Here's the deal. One phone call overcomes 365 days of perceived indifference. You will overcome it immediately by making a phone call. And catch, he says perceived indifference. Why is it perceived? Because it's our perception. Oh, I'm not going to call them. They would hate me. I feel like I've never talked to them. They're not going to take it. Why would they want to talk to me? They're going to feel, you know why? Because if we're perceiving that, they're not going to perceive that, especially if you don't call and ask for a referral, right? After 100, you know, 387 days, you're going to call and just say, hey, man, just checking in. I just was looking, saw on Facebook, I haven't seen you in a while, and I saw pictures of your daughter's ballet recital. How'd that go? Bam. All right, reconnect. Right. Yep. The important thing with friends and relatives is that a lot of times, I mean, I have family and friends all over the country. They don't realize that they can refer you mm -hmm. as an agent. Mm -hmm. They think, well, you know, I've got a friend that's moving to California, and you're in Florida. How can you refer somebody? It, it, that's a big piece that they miss. And and when I when I do talk to them, it, it's one of the things that I cover. Hey, if you know somebody's moving, I'm a, a part of a big referral group. Let me know if I may have some agent out in California that can help your friend. Mm -hmm. And then the third workshop we do here, uh, it's called Elevate. And it's all about taking some of this stuff, let's get it implemented, let's get the database, let's get a follow-up communication plan, and then let's elevate. And that's it. I wish I had that in the mortgage business. I have to be licensed in all these different, I can't just get 25% to refer my buddy over to a, probably a way better producing customer service agent in California than by someone calling up somebody in their neighborhood and getting their brother's best friend's wife's uncle who's part-time, right? Cool. So. Um, End in mind, right? This is with the end in mind. But here's your answers. A friend or relative. They, they say one of these two, a friend or relative or another agent. And you know what? What's going to happen psychologically, and a lot of the psychology, right, is they're going to be leaning back because they they feel guilty now. I mean, I'm sitting here talking to Rob, and Rob asked me this, and I'm like, the guy in my neighborhood, the guy that sold me my house and I bought, even though we called three days a week, like it's somebody else. So he's going to be awkward, and maybe let him be awkward, right? Not your feeling to feel, but what you want to know is just really simply, hey, what do you like about him or her? What is it? And you're going to find out what makes that person tick, 
And if you take the blinders off, right, you're going to be able to get some awesome information of how you can strive to be a better agent for people, right? So great stuff. If it's you, it's likely an A plus or an A for you. It's a very good thing to know. And if it's, I'm not sure, that's an amazing question because that really falls into a B category and you're just going to, you know, what would it take for me to be that person for you? It's pretty simple. And they're going to tell you and then you're going to be that person. So a buddy of mine, my, uh, my nine-year-old was in Cub Scouts and went on the uh, camping trip. It's not really camping because it's Disney camping, so that's the only kind of camping that I would ever do. But um, we're at the pool because, of course, Disney has a pool that we're camping at. And um, buddy of mine, Dennis, who owns a payroll company in Tampa, we're a business guy, so we start talking about what books are reading and stuff like that. And um, I share with him seven levels of communication, and we start having a conversation about it. And he's just like, you know, that's really weird. I met this real estate agent at a networking event. And I don't know, they got for coffee or something, but started the process of communicating and got to the point where, yeah, they asked me, and I was like, I don't know, I'm not moving. I haven't bought in, I don't know, five years. Like, I don't have a real estate agent because their real estate agent stopped communicating with them or did the cheesy little stuff that everyone does, right? So she, yeah. So she got to the point where she asked this question and he was like, I don't really know. And she's like, well, I mean, what take you to that person, you know? And he, the, the law of reciprocity was in such effect where he's like, yeah, why not? And I forgot to message him because he actually is moving down to South Tampa to find out who's selling his house through. I'm, I'm sure it's her because she just asked the question. And now psychologically, you get people to commit. Well, it's you, see. Yeah, man, it makes sense, right? Perfect. There's a lot, there's good power in that. Uh, so advanced agents. Eventually, you're going to want to go deeper with this. If you're not yet an advanced agent with this stuff, um, this is where you want to get to sooner or later is find out their wedding anniversary, their favorite sports or their favorite teams and or hobbies, pets, charities or causes, beverages. You don't want to be joking about drinking beer if people are like alcoholic and they don't drink. So I'm sorry. I joke about it a lot more than I actually drink. But uh, Music, band, singer. Zach Brown band's coming to town. Any Zach Brown band fans? Oh, I love that. Gosh, I really, it's like next weekend on like a Tuesday. Um, but how cool would it be? to know what someone's anniversary, wedding anniversary is and call up the dude a week prior. Hey, Joe, don't forget, man. Wedding anniversary is coming up next week. Don't forget to buy your wife an awesome gift. Hey, Mr. CPA, just to let you know the Elmers, their uh, wedding anniversary is coming up next week. You you put them in touch with me. Just thought that might be a great touch point for you instead of having to talk about taxes all the time, right? Awesome opportunities for you as you get deeper with your database. How much information is too much, guys? How much how much information is too much to know? No such thing. No, I mean, feel well. <laughs> yeah, I know there's too much information. I can share that. You know, and you guys can tell me that. And I get that. But literally, I mean, in an Excel spreadsheet, guess what? The columns are start with A, right? And then go to Z. And then after A, A, A. All right, and they keep going. A, 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 B, A, C. I mean, you can have infinite gym. Our whole database for our agents, right? Have it's 4,642 columns wide, right? And it just keeps going. We just gather data, gather data, gather. You don't wonder how I call you on your birthday? Okay, Google. I have it all memorized, right? In my head, oh, you know, today's John's birthday. No, all right, I have an Excel spreadsheet that tells me. How, I mean, would it not be cool when the Yankees are coming to town, and I'm a Rays fan, to just pull that list of my Yankee fans and just call them and text them and give them a little grief, if that's it. I mean, I'm just touching base, man. I'm living life with people. You know what I mean? If, like Brian said, the mothers you know, in the room, the veterans in the room, it's Veterans Day. Hey, man, you know what? I just want to say thanks again. You know, one more time. Memorial Day. What, you know, find reasons to touch people, and there is no such thing as too much information. Like I said, favorite beverage, all right? I'm a shop top uh, beer guy now, all right? I love shop top. I love that just the way the dude looks, all right? Got a little orange action going on. You probably have one every month, but it, that's a lot for me. But, you know, so put that in your database, all right? <laughs> all right? So I'm just saying everything goes in there, right? And you don't sit there, you're not going through a list and asking, okay, now that I got you on the phone, let me go through my stuff. You're just living life talking to them, and you're gathering data. I heard it. I heard it, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. You know, bam, just take it in, take it in, 
have something that's on your phone, get out to your car, put it in your phone, it automatically syncs up, right, Michael, from your phone right to your realty juggler, and boom, it's in and you're done. Any yeah. veterans in the room? What's that? Any military veterans in the room? They're all next door. No? <laughs> hey, seriously, thanks for your service, guys. Absolutely really appreciate it. So, like, as an example, I got anybody tag military veterans in their database? You do? So, you have a list right now you can export who's a military veteran. I don't have a lot of people. Small one. So, here's what's cool about it. Like, I don't know, it's probably like a year ago I realized, dude, what? Because my, my dad's a, a Vietnam veteran. He's got a Silver Star, a Bronze Star, two Purple Hearts. I mean, never talks about it. He's got post traumatic stress. I mean, it's like, the guy's a war hero, right? Dang, man, that's that's like my DNA, you know? I'm like, dang, man, I'm so grateful. My father was in World War II. Like, I never had to serve because, I mean, I'd be the one, like, wetting my pants in a foxhole somewhere. I mean, I don't know how it would react. So I'm really grateful for those guys. So uh, one of the guys, our customer care guy, Joe, was in Afghanistan. So a 27-year-old guy, like, served seven years. Purple Heart got, you know, blown up by a bomb. It's like, that's crazy. You, you wouldn't know it. He looks, you know, it's fine. But, like, um... So what better way to start somewhere and start tagging veterans? If you really care about veterans, man, start tagging them. And you know what we get to do tomorrow? Is we get to call the people that we do have tagged. I just wanna thank you for service, man. That's, that's it, that's the only reason for my call. So like question comes up, like do you put your business card in there? Do you put, well it doesn't matter because they know who I am. When I call them to thank them for serving, I'm not talking about business. When I call them to thank the mothers for being a mother on Mother's Day, I had that implemented in my old database, it was killer. I sent them cards and all that stuff to mothers and fathers, and then I let my database go. So I'm re redoing that. My point is start somewhere. Spend five minutes and just think, my database, yeah, who are the veterans? Who are the veterans? If you don't call them with a chosen one script, just call them, right? So I'm gonna show you some ways you can really systematize that. Uh, this deeper database, uh, tinyurl.com deeper database, is a form uh, Michael Mayer uses. I would strongly advise you take this form, you make your own. Make stuff that matters to you. I don't know if they're a military veteran or not. That's a great question for me because they can be eligible for a VA loan off the gate, but I can share that with you, right? I can, I'm gonna get everything. Your mortgage folks, I want that to be me, but if it's not me, your mortgage folks are gonna get everything. So ask them to set up a stinking system to get you their birthdays and put it in your put it in your database, right? What's cool about the database is top producer of the juggler, do they, do they send out an automated birthday greeting? You can set it to trigger anything. So like I know like our database, again, we're just, we're elevating our stuff, is um, we're gonna do a little video. I'll do it once a year. So ideally, once I get your birthdays, you can get this, but like every day on their birthday, does anybody call everybody on their birthday? Bob has a ridiculous system for this, but anybody uh, call everybody on their birthday just to say happy birthday? It's like, man, where do I go? Do I get it from Facebook? But what if they're not on Facebook? I miss them and then, gosh, I gotta plug into Facebook every day. So what if? you had in your database system, does top producer do that? Where you can set an automated thing with their birthday? So like I just emailed this morning our people, I said, hey, I've, I've got the video that I wanna do, and now a video, happy birthday. A video, happy birthday, same video, same, 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 same. And now your birthday is January 2nd, so I just created a new video for 2015. Video, 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 and it's automated, and it's me. And you know, I do a lot of video. Our video is crazy, it doesn't have to be some crazy, it's just, Hey, I just want to say happy birthday. I was just thinking about you. God, it's so cool. Another year's gone by. Have an awesome birthday. And that's it. Automated goes out just because I got their name in there. It's crazy. With these CRMs, go get one. Stuff is nuts what it can do. Not yet advanced agent. What the heck do we say? Hey, I was just thinking about you because... Why would we be thinking about somebody? Anybody? Sports. Dude, sports. I just football season starting, man. I'm not, a fo I'm not a football fan. Oh, I thought you were, man. My bad. Hey, anyway, how's it going? What's up, man? I haven't talked to you in a while. Yeah, you know what, Michael? You haven't talked to me in like three years, man. I am so sorry. Dude, what's up with life, man? So for call reluctance, dude, that's what's going to happen. They're just happy to hear from you, right? It's not a big deal. So what are some of the things we can call and think about people for? If someone else started saying something. How are the kids? Hey, I was just thinking about you, man. How are the kids? I don't have kids. Oh man, you know, say we're so afraid of people. It's like, man, I'm, I, 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 um, I said somebody's name. Uh, one of these trains. I said somebody's name was Andrew. So I was thinking about my buddy Rich, but her daughter, her son's name is Alex. 
I'm like, she was probably impressed I knew it started with an A. I was close, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you want to be Rob over here? Yeah, I mean, Rob, you see what I'm saying? You look just like Rob. Um, and I think she was on a list to come here too, so I, geez, I'm sorry. So, anything. Hey, I was thinking about you. The golf tournament was on. I hate golf. I didn't know you hated golf. Jeez. You don't, don't be a jerk about it. You got to be careful, right? Don't be manipulative about it. I'm not afraid to call people. I can call Rob. Just, I'm just calling you to talk to you, man. What's up? And that's cool. We'll see where the conversation goes. But um, people are afraid. So sit down and have coffee and just think about, gosh, I was thinking about you because I was thinking about the beach and just nice weather. And I don't know why I was just thinking about you. School's starting for the kids. School's getting out with the kids. Summer's here. I was at the pool. I drank a beer, the Rays game, whatever it is. How much information can a mortgage broker share with me? Can you share everything up to some financial? No. If a borrower I mean, like, gives me authorization page? to share information, I would never share their social security number. I mean, well, I yeah, no reason. You can never know. Stuff like that. You get all that information. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's something that we do at the end of the conversation. Can we share your information with the real estate agent? We're not going to talk about mortgages. I got a guy with a 44.99% debt ratio that we just got pre approved for you. You're going to go buy a house this weekend to put an offer today. I'm going to talk about some of these. Rob, this is a tight deal. Mr. Barr, Rob needs to know exactly where you are. Hey, Rob, we just had one, believe it or not. The guy had $4 million in federal tax limits. $4 million in federal tax limits. Very wealthy guy. What? He must be a congressman. Yeah. Not a congressman, he's a business owner. He's making payments on him, he's had him for years. He's just trying to co sign on his baby daughter buying an FHA mortgage. Hey, Jackie, you just got to know this guy's got $4 million in tax limits. Jackie, hey, we can do the deal, but it's one of these manually underwritten deals and it, it might fall apart. I'm just letting you know. They're telling me it's good. I got email confirmations. I, I, you just got to know that before you go out and write the contract on a $130,000 house. Because the thing is, He's just trying to buy a $130,000 house for his baby girl. But the problem is he's asking to buy borrow money from the government when the government is owed $4 million by him. It's pretty important that you know that stuff, right? But other than that, yeah, birthday stuff, I mean, why not? Okay, so I'm just thinking about you because you know the topics. You're going to talk. Then you're going to transition. And this might not be the very first call. You're going to transition. Hey, uh, you know, John, I'm a real estate agent. So, hey, if you ever need anything real estate related, like mortgage, insurance, home related vendors, anything like that, just let me know, all right? Boom. This guy's a giver. Boom. This guy's a real estate agent. That's right. Cool. I just had a guy text me across the street from me. Single guy. We're always making fun of him because his house is always kind of a mess. And then he gets a notice and he has to clean it up. John. And John texted me in the morning and he's like, hey, do you have a handyman? And I don't have it. My wife had a handyman, but. Um, just because he knows that, like, I'm in real estate, so I know to compete, right? So, uh, what we want to get to, maybe at the first call, is this um, is this script, Are You the Chosen One? So keep that in mind, the end in mind. And, you know, I think real estate agents, a lot of times, just like mortgage people, this is not a 30 minute conversation. This is a five minute conversation at best. Why? Well, because uh, it is 11.20, and uh, Rob, I had a call, got to get on at 11.30. I don't have all day long to talk to Rob. I got, I'm in, I'm out. What am I doing? I'm reconnecting, confirming their phone number, getting their mailing address. Because I'm going to talk to them again next month or in the next quarter. We're going to talk again, right? So it's not a one time a year thing. Knowing is always better than wondering. Awesome script here. Um, eventually, they're going to ask you how business is. And this is just a killer script. You know, business is business. It's kind of like the ocean. You know, it, it ebbs and it flows. And I just know I can't control it. You know, but uh, one thing I am really excited about is that I'm 38% on pace for my referral goal right now. Pure Michael Mayer stuff. That, guys, I'm just telling you, that script right there, Michael touched on on Thursday in the bank. Right? He added on Friday, because I was in the one in Orlando as well. He added the, the ocean line. I'm telling you, if I had this thing, you guys get that question daily. Right? You meet somebody for the first time, hey, what do you, um, oh, you know, I'm a real estate. Really? Oh, that's cool. Hey, how's, how's the market, right? How's the market? How's business? Always. You can almost count on it like clockwork, right? Before it was, right, before we thought, oh, business is great. How did you know it? Even business sucked. I was like, business is awesome. I'm such a fake until I make it. You know, all that kind of stuff. And that never portrays well because you weren't believing it yourself. It's hard to sell something you wouldn't buy, right? So now, 
This is my name, she's sick. Joe, ask me how this is. Hey, Joe, I'm a real estate. Hey, Bob, how's the business? Hey, you know what? This is his business. It's got, you know, it's not like the ocean. It has some flows, and, you know, I've learned, you know, I certainly can't control it. I just try and navigate as best I can. And the thing I'm most excited about, though, is I'm 38% of the way putting on the floor this year. And that really is fantastic, too. I was taught the same thing you were talking about. How is the business? Your pay is fantastic. I always have a hard time saying that. Exactly. I get this plastic smile. And then, inevitably, I'm 38 percent of the way to my referral goal, right? Okay, stay with me. 38 percent of the way to my referral goal. Next question is, referral goal? What's that? What's a referral goal? Oh, it's awesome. You know what? This month, I want to give out 50 referrals and receive 25 referrals. So the big question for you, Joe, let me turn that around. How can I help you? Uh, you know, I've, I've got a lot of connections. Is there anything I can help you with? Anybody I can connect you with? I just got a lot of, how can I help you? I'm looking for something in your answer to apply. Awesome. You know, I've got a great guy. You can text me right now. I've got his card. Boom. Now you're giving. Remember, Michael, the whole thing? If you guys have been, if you ever read the book, yeah, read the book. If you've been to the seminar, get the replay of it because I'm telling you, you throw massive value, and we like equilibrium in our life, right? We like balance. And when I throw massive value your way, and I load up your side of this teeter-totter with, with value, you're sitting there like this, you're like, holy crap, he's giving me so much stuff. I've got it. I psychologically have to reciprocate that. So the next time I know somebody that needs real estate services, bam, here it comes, just because of the massive value you've given, i got to throw it back. Psychologically, never ask for it, it happens. Okay, you should give, that's a whole generosity generation. It starts with the big G, all right? You gotta be generous first. That will lead to reciprocity, which leads to referrals, which leads to profitability, which leads to pro prosperity, which allows you to be even more generous and the cycle starts all over. It's just incredible stuff. That line right there changes, but you gotta have a referral goal too. We'll talk about that. Okay, so on your sheets there, right below the dotted line. So that first question is you want free access to the workshop number two. You can put yes or no. Your biggest opportunity, and right below that is your referral goal. So a great referral goal, you know, as real estate agents, you guys have, a lot of times you're the, the front door, so immediately you've got a referral to a mortgage company. More and more, you better have a referral to an insurance company now, insurance agent, to make sure, you know, you're, you're in line with all that stuff. You've got referrals to contractors, pest inspectors, home inspectors, I mean, you name it. you got, you got like five opportunities right there the first day you meet them if you're being proactive. Right? So a referral goal for you might be, hey, my referral goal is to refer 50 people and to get 25 referrals, right? But set a goal, whatever that is. Have a referral goal and write it down. And then you wanna share your referral goal with people on a, on a whiteboard in your office, your home office, on your Excel sheet. I'm gonna show you some examples of a pretty big producer in just a little bit. Ask how you can help people. You know, because that, that's the cool thing is when that, when that script happens, when that exchange happens, you don't just sit there and like, oh, I'm a referral goal. But after you let them know what that is and where you are in your goal, it's a great opportunity for Bob to say to Joe, so Joe, how can I help you? That's a completely different conversation than, uh, how's the market? Are you looking to know buy or sell real estate in the next five months? How's the market? Oh, the market's great, great time to buy. And the biggest problem with that is that if it's not a great time to buy or sell, dude, people are smart. And your credibility is gone. You're one of those used car realtors, right? Same thing with me. Like, man, getting a mortgage now is hard, man. It really is. It's hard. Let's just be real about it. It's not It's not stated income, no doc loans anymore, you know? So do it and track it, right? Track it, track it, track it, track it. Uh, how do you get their mailing address? Some people are like, gosh, how do you, how do you get their mailing address? And this is how you do it. You say, oh, hey, what is your mailing address? <laughs> <laughs> and I've got, they give it to you. That's a great script. Anybody got anything at their home address from me? At their home address? Yeah. 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 And what did I do? I probably texted you this. Hey, what's your what's your mailing address? Oh, Brian at theheckmangroup.com. No, 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 no. Oh. Mailing address. Oh, 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 mailing address. Because realize people don't even get mail from their family, right? Well, we're going to be different because handwritten, like personalized stuff from mailboxes we do. So somebody is thinking about what about these people that I haven't spoken to in years? Is anybody thinking that? Call reluctance, like, ah, oh, crap. What am I going to say to these people? 
And we just covered all that because the reality is these people, they do not think about you nearly as much as you think they do. You just go do it. Call them. That's a problem, by the way, because they don't think about you. It is. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. So check this out. You don't have to write this down. Uh, Steve Jobs has this awesome little video. It's one minute and 42 seconds on YouTube. Tinyurl.com slash Steve Jobs just asked. Obviously, it was a long time ago. Um, killer little thing on this concept of call reluctance. He's basically going to slap you in the face in a roundabout, really cool way. Uh, that's a bunch of nonsense. Or what does Michael Mayer say in his book? Cock Cockamamie. Cock 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 right. Awesome little bonus for the source. Uh, giving their email address. So for the people that are still twitching, because we haven't talked about email, after you hang up with them, you're going to text them. Oh, hey, forgot to confirm your best email. What is it? Make sure you put your name on there so that they know you, because they probably don't have your cell phone number saved in their phone, because we just haven't talked to them in a while. I would copy the script exactly like it is. Oh, hey, very informal. Forgot to confirm your best email. You know, best email. What's what's your best email? Is it personal? Is it work? Is it my corporate account? Is it on my phone? My best one. And if they want to know, the one you got on your phone, because that's probably the one that's not going to change, right? <coughs> now, we're not going to waste time on the phone having to get their email address and how do I spell your name and then the phone cracked up. Just do it on text because the email is very, very key, right? So awesome source of how you can uh, utilize the, the phone calls, because remember, email sucks. Nobody, how many people are going to delete the emails? Why? Where is it on the pyramid? Where is the email on the pyramid, right? Low. Right. So anybody get a conference call from us yesterday to confirm up here? Yeah. Anybody get um, Joe on the phone in my office? Anybody get a voicemail? Anybody get a voicemail from us? Voicemail? Okay. So a phone burner, it's phoneburner.com. 70% of the time you spend on the phone is wasted. And you know why? Because you got to look it up. You got to go through, you got to click, click, click. And then if you don't get any notifications that distract you, you finally get their number and you click it and you dial it and all that stuff. You got to wait for it to ring, ring, ring. My cell phone takes forever to ring, ring, ring and finally get them. And it's a voicemail. I got to leave a voicemail. I'm calling the next guy. Go through the same process. Ring, 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 voicemail. I got to leave the same voicemail. Over and over and over and over. So here's how the system works. It's uh, you upload your contacts from a CSV file from Excel. So any of your databases can export and import into here. This could be your leads, your cold leads, your past clients, your sphere of influence, your family, your whatever, your veterans, your mothers and fathers for Father's Day stuff. You record your message once. So check this out. Hey, this is Brian Hunter. Just wanted to give you a quick buzz. Hey, there's a home show coming to town, the big one in two weeks, and I just thought that um, if you want to go, I've got some free tickets for you. So give me a call at the office, 813-749-7776. If you want to grab those free tickets, uh, I can either meet up with you or, uh, or just drop them in the mail. So so let me know. Again, it's next weekend, and uh, my office number, 813-749-7776. Have an awesome day. Talk to you soon. Click. So what I do is I'm going to upload, let's say, 30 names, record the message, Choose those 30 names, start the dial session. It's all cloud-based. There's no uh, there's no pauses or anything. So here's what I did. Dial Sadie's name, gets a voicemail. Boom, click a button, it leaves a voicemail, starts dialing the next person. I get voicemail, boom, click a button, it leaves a voicemail. Starts dialing Rob, I get his voicemail, boom, leave a message. Start calling Kevin. By the time it would have taken me to leave my first voicemail, I'm on the phone with Kevin because Kevin actually answered. Right? So we just model stuff for you so you see how it is. So who talked with Joe yesterday? So I'm sorry, what's your name? Michelle. Michelle. So Joe calls you in my office, and Joe called on behalf of Brian and Bob, right? And Joe was just calling to confirm this. So pretty simple stuff, right? right? Who got a voicemail? What's your name? Sal. Sal? So Sal got a voicemail, and that was me, right? Right? So the way that we, and you know, I'm not saying, I don't like call my customers that are trying to get a loan like this. I call them up and it's me trying to get them a dang loan, but it's going to take you one minute to get through however big your contact list is. So if you're calling hundred people, it's going to take you hundred minutes. Has anybody sat down and in one day dialed through 100 people? How long does it take you, Sadie? Um, I got, my best day was like 136 talking to most of them. So we're talking like a whole eight. Eight hour, day. Eight hour day. And Bob, what was your numbers on this? You've called 70 people? 
Yeah, so many people on a new agent list for who to take the real estate exam, right? We're calling them, right? As a matter of fact, Sadie, right? We spoke one time. And guess what system I was using when I called you, Sadie? That's Sadie. Phone burner. All right, so Sadie, I uh, was going through the first time I did it, I didn't have phone burner. I was leaving the individual message. Hey, this is Bob, you look over on the future. I'm going to be glad to get that. I'm going to tell you, say, congratulations, you need to be able to who to take this real estate exam. Hey, we just want to be here, you know, where that we were out here. You can go to our website, da 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 da. <laughs> Next one, all right, eight hours to call 70 people, all right, got a hold of about 30% of them, just like the numbers say, the other 70% I had to leave messages on. I'm telling Brian this, whining about it, saying I think this is going to be some value out of this, it sucks, dude, I'm telling you. He's like, phone burn. I said, what? He said, don't you ever go to my train? I said, no, I just like, you know, so I said, phone burn, I looked it up, and literally I said, man, you're right, I'm in. Next time I made those same 70 calls, 70 minutes. Talk to the same 21 people, right? 30% of them, 70 minutes as opposed to eight hours. Okay? And they still get the same voicemail that they would have gotten high. By, by, plus, by the end, my voicemail at the end, at eight hours, was terrible. This is Bob McGill. <laughs> I am the broker of uh, you know what I mean? It, was, it didn't have any of the excitement that I had at hour one and hour eight. Trust me. All right, so it's a lot easier to have a lot of excitement in minute 70 than it is in minute 560. Okay, so I was still on. Uh, this is great. If you're going to make mass calls, this is the way, you know, something like that. And I need to add something. Oh, and I say this all the time. He's the only broker that reached out and called me. I got tons of mail. I mean, my mailbox was full every single day as soon as I applied for my exam, my state exam. And this man called me. Unfortunately, when he got a hold of me, we talked for about 45 minutes. I think I screwed up his side. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's, all, that's all factored in. Okay. That's all factored in. So, like, how long would it take Joe to go through his 1,500 contact database and find out, of those 1,500, do I have, what did you say before? You had, like, 30, you said? Yeah. But here's the thing. You got, what's the difference there? Uh, 1,470 people? You don't know. So do you just disregard them all? Do you just drip mail on them like every other realtor, or you could break that up and break it up into, if you want to pound through it in one week, 300 contacts per day, five hours a day doing this, five hours a day, that's going to be a hell of a week, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But at the end of that week, spent 25 hours, it's a part-time job. And in one week, Joe has just gone through his entire database. How long have you been in real estate for? seven years and done what most agents will never do ever. ever in one week and at the end of that week matt say set yourself a goal and go grab you a cigar and a cold beer and what that's that's a massive accomplishment mm -hmm. right so uh system uh it costs it costs 149 dollars a month that's expensive man yeah it is if you don't use it if you use it, it's just going to be like your $35 a month. It's going to spit out cash for you every stinking month. This promo code FREEDOM allow, uh, it gives you $119 is what it discounts to. That's unlimited calls. You can do it, uh, I think it's like eight hours a month. It's like 60 bucks or four. I don't know. I don't sell it. It's just some crazy technology I share. Uh, don't forget your one big aha, your first thing and one word that you use to describe it. So email, let's implement some email stuff. What to email and when. And we're going to kind of move pretty quickly through this. Topics to email about. It's really no different than we were calling about. It's just, you know, now email is going to get deleted. So it's really a waste of your time. Just being honest. Is it a great strategy? Heck yeah. Anybody get our emails Saturday morning? Strategy emails? Cool. So I'm still going to send that to you. You're not getting them? Eh, probably your spam filter. What was the promo? Probably answer. Freedom. Freedom. She probably unsubscribed. I don't even know. I did not unsubscribe. So hey, topics to email about, guys. It's anything. It's the home show. It's uh, it's the Rays game. It's uh, last week that we just. I didn't know this, but the Rays have a, a promotional partnership with um, with Papa John's Pizza. Anytime the Rays score six or more runs and they win, whether it's home or away, you can order Papa John's Pizza the next day and get fifty percent off by putting in Rays six, which is very safe for the Papa John's right now. Very safe. Very safe. Raise yeah. number, number six. So I get, I get people that are like, dude, that's cool. And I, I'm just telling you, I, I do video because what happens in video is video is email communication, right? So on that pyramid, it's really low. It's advertising, the billboards that you don't pay attention to, 
direct mail, it's all those crazy flyers and postcards that everybody sends out. It's email, and we all delete it. Handwritten notes, nobody gets anymore. And then it's phone calls, and then it's events and seminars, and then it's one-on-one. -on -one. So what's crazy about video, that's gonna be part of our elevate strategy, is like, who gets, who gets them on Saturday mornings? Lee gets them? Yeah. So what happens is Saturday mornings, Lee's sitting there drinking her coffee in her PJs between 7 and 7.30, and she's on her iPad, and oh, there's Brian talking about this raise promotion and eating pizza. And what happens is I send out an email to everybody. It's an email communication in my book, but it's one-on-one -on -one at the top of the pyramid in her house, on front center, on her iPad, next to her coffee room. Me and Lee are hanging out every week. Why Saturday morning? Saturday morning is the best open rate, statistically proven in the morning. Because who's rummaging through their email trying to get set up for their day and their closings and their inspections on a Saturday morning at 7 in the morning? One person. You're really not. You're really yeah, a, not Saturday uh, morning. Friday morning, yes. A breather on Saturday morning. Cool. It's statistically the best open rate and the least uh, opt out rate. So, uh, guaranteed response email from Michael Mayer. We're going to race through this, guys. Subject is, hey, Johnny, I have a couple of quick, specific questions for you. Hey, Johnny, hope all's well, wanted to touch base. I have a couple of specific questions for you. Could you please call me at your earliest convenience? That's 813 dot, dot, dot. It is not an emergency, but when you have a second, please give me a call. I promise to only take a minute or two of your time. Thank you in advance. Talk to you soon. Brian, P.S. If somebody else answers the phone, please let them know I need to talk with you. Thanks. That's 813 dot, 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 dot. If you have somebody that's not going to reply back, to this email in your database, they're a D. Pretty simple. Because if they're anywhere remotely like you, trust you, anything, they're gonna reply back to this, right? So when they call, remember, just go back. Keep all this stuff simple. Just go back. Hey, I was thinking about you because I heard about this raised pizza thing. I know you like eating pizza, I don't know. Hey, you know I'm a real estate agent who wanted to work that transition at some point. Maybe not the first time you call, but really what this is for is to get to our, hey, I was just curious if you had a friend or neighbor that was looking to buy or sell, who would you introduce them to to sell their house or to buy their house? Confirm their mailing address. See, it's just simple systems, right? Don't forget where email is, though, on the pyramid. That's a visual for you. It's way low. So don't rely on email to do all your stuff. Facebook. Anybody not using Facebook in their business to communicate? Cool. And there's people that are anti-Facebook, and that's totally cool. My brother's anti-Facebook. It's all good. Here's what I know. People do like on Facebook, whether you like it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whatever. Facebook, by the way, is masters at data collection that Bob's talking about. Because Facebook knows what kind of books you like, what kind of movies you like, where you've been, what you do, what you're posting about. They've done amazing, that's how people, whatever, their average price of their person is like four to five dollars, and that's why when they're at their IPO, crazy how much they, whatever, are valued at. So check this out. On your personal page, anybody have a business page? Anybody not have a business page? Perfect. Everyone's like, oh, business page, personal page? Who gives a crap? The problem with business pages is they're so saturated, and nobody's going to nobody's gonna come to my business page and do stuff. But man, the minute that I reach out to Kevin, and I'm like, hey, man, saw you went golfing the other day. How'd you hit him? Dude, we're engaging now, but it's personal. It's just like here. Like, if we talk just in the corporate environment, it's a lot different than when we sit down, Barbara, like one-on-one -on -one and we're hanging out. Big difference. Same exact thing on Facebook. So check this out. Go to friends down here in the bottom left. Click on more. Click on create a list. And then what you're going to do is you're going to create a new list. This could be your A pluses. You can do anything. Your A's, your B's, your C's, your leads, your prospects, your family, your friends, other agents, your vendors, whatever you want to do. Add people to your list. Bobby is uh, he's an awesome young guy. He's a past client of mine. Works for a pretty awesome organization in town here. Refer us a bunch of people. We got a handful of people in his office that have uh, been referred over to us. You create this list, and then you've got just a list of just, for example, past clients. So, like something that we did with our past clients and, and just friends, you know, like talk about being a connector. Michael Mayer talks a lot about was we might play paintball because I, I like golf, but what I really like to do when I golf is just I'm pretty bad and I'm not going to spend the time and the money to get good. So I just smoke a cigar and drink a beer, but I, that's not really my mojo is to go out to a nice golf course. I'd rather spend 60 or 70 bucks and go in the woods and play paintball and shoot people. So we did that, and apparently we had a pretty good response from, this I is shoot people with my golf shot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get asked to come back a lot, though, you know? So, uh, so that's just something that we did, but I mean, here's the point, is that uh, that's just a 
the picture I have on there, but um, all that shows in this feed is just people in that category. So I can go to Facebook in 15 minutes a week and check in on everybody in this category. And here's the key thing. Make a comment, click the like button, and now I'm in their world. So the reality is, you know that pyramid? People don't want to talk with you guys. They don't want to talk with me. Anybody going to jump to take a call from a mortgage person on their phone just out of the blue this afternoon at 3 o'clock? <laughs> I mean, come on, you're not. Now, now some do for me because they know that we're going to call them with something pretty good. But I mean, you're not. The title guys, not, you guys aren't going to answer the phone for the title guy. And that's the deal that you're working on. But you know, I bet that uh, when we start engaging on Facebook here, you're sitting at home and I'm on Lee's iPad at 9 o'clock at night and she's finally sitting down to check stuff. Oh, Brian checked in with me. It's just being around what we're doing live, right? You can connect, engage, be friends. You can just add new people to this list here and just grow it out, right? All sorts of different groups you can create. Top 30 referral sources, prospective referral sources, past clients, prospects, circle of influence, other peers or like marketing ideas you can give from other people. Um, all sorts of stuff you can create there. Personal messages inside of Facebook. So here's what's wild is we all delete our email. I get people all the time, like, I sent you an email on that. I'm like, I get 8,000 emails a day. And our team monitors emails for business stuff. So my buddies that email me, I'm like, yeah, dude, I, I'm sorry, man. Call me on the phone. I'll get back to you after work hours, you know? But if they Facebook me, man, it's like my own little email account in Facebook. And this is how all people, I mean, it's just the psychology of Facebook. They're, they're going to, when I delete this message, i got to look you in the face and delete Spencer. Like there's something psychologically that happens in there. I got I got to look at Jackie and delete her message. So I better communicate with her because it's bolded and I haven't replied back. Man, I feel bad versus the red X in email. And it shows up on your mobile devices. It's just wild stuff. So here's the thing though: nothing that we ever do has as much impact and as much influence in in anything that we do as how we make people feel. Right? So crucial, crucial, crucial. So. So being really serious and really like honest here, like don't use this stuff to be a jerk, to be manipulative. You know what I mean? Like there, there's some awesome stuff you start with the database and you just impact and influence a ton of people. So the three C's of communicating with your database, content, don't send crap. Don't email if you're gonna send crap. Don't call them if you got crap to talk about. Be consistent with it and be committed to it because you're never ever gonna get what you want. It's all about what you're committed to. That's what we get, right? So number two, workshop number two is going to be in gym. And this is what we're going to talk about it is crafting your tailored communication plan. And it's going to be different for everybody. Some of them might look really similar, but it's going to be a lot. My way of communicating with somebody is completely different from the next person, right? We're going to implement your F-bomb, which Michael Mayer talks about in the book, and that's your, uh, your follow-up system. Anybody have a killer follow-up system when you get a new lead that just goes and goes and goes? Killer. We're going to talk about some of that stuff. And then creating and printing your personal brochure. In the book, it talks about it being a SOS, Spectrum of Solutions. So we're going to talk about that and how to create that, give you some templates, uh, literally give you the keys to call the printer and say, look, I want you know template number one. Now, you're going to have to figure out for yourself what it means for you, right? So like my, what makes me who I am is going to be a lot different than the next mortgage person. What makes you a real estate agent and why they should visit you is it's going to take some brain cells, right? You can uh, grab your spot at implementnow.us, and I think tomorrow that website's going to change over to next month's. So this isn't FYI. And by the way, the dates for Tampa Bay, June 16th is Monday night. June 17th is Tuesday morning at GTAR. And June 19th is uh, Thursday morning back here. Right. Perfect. So you know, so Bob and I sponsor these things together because we have a very similar mindset about how we go about our businesses, which is just give. And statistically, people are going to come work with Bob because he's a great guy. He's a very forward-thinking, visionary kind of guy, and he cares about people. And uh, you know, future home, you learn more, you eat more. You can check out all their stuff there. And uh, I'm a mortgage guy, so we're a full-service mortgage lender. We broker too, so we've got outlets for you name it. We do uh, everything: FHA, VA, conventional, USDA, 203K. I just heard that we got four national stuff now. Huh? All right. We do three, two, one prior to closings, which is uh, here to close three days prior to closing. 
package out two days prior to closing, hard reviewed one day prior to closing. We just did that in less than three weeks um, for a close we got tomorrow. We have express approvals for people that, you know, we got to get their stuff going and get them in the hopper fast. But hey, it's just, it's much more than risk mortgages. So for us, we want to add three to six to 12 more closings per year, depending on what your database is and where you are in your, your business and your system. You know, if you're right now closing one deal a year and have no database, it's going to be kind of hard to flip that around to being realistic. But that's kind of our mojo. Much more than just mortgages. Make sense? As we step in here too, you guys, here's the deal. Brian Heckman is one of the best real estate trainers out there, and he's a mortgage guy. He said his whole business model is, I'm just going to throw massive value to agents. All right? I've been in real estate a long time. I, I grew up in the era where mortgage guys came in with a rate sheet and a box of donuts. Right? They threw them on our, our conference room table and said, hey, you should use me. And I said, oh, yeah, great, and why? Uh, you should use me. Okay? Brian gives massive value. All right? He continues to do this. He just, his whole, he said we're like-minded. All right? The reason he does this is his goal is he lives this out. He wants to help real estate agents close three, six, 12 more deals a year. Quite frankly, if you use him as a mortgage guy, that'd be awesome. All right? It's not a prerequisite that he's, he can't come to training if you're not going to use him. That's not it. But I'm just telling you, He's given massive generosity, so don't forget the second part of that is reciprocity. All right? Don't forget who butters your bread. You start working a database and get this thing set up, and all of a sudden you start doing all these deals, don't forget who told you. All right? So I'm just telling you. Appreciate that. Uh, I have all sorts of compliance, so I'm compliant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, so we have 10 minutes and we're going to get out of here. So uh, love to hear one big aha. Uh, your first thing that you're going to do, and one word that would describe kind of what we went through here. So um, we got to do it fast, though. Okay. So Joe, go ahead and start. Uh, my big aha uh, would be uh, we need to uh, need for a plan for executable communication. Awesome. Okay. What's and one word you do to describe this? Fantastic. You know, I will, just let me say this. Um, I've been in real estate for a while, but this stuff that we see today, this is probably the most important, most significant thing that you can do for your business, more so than expired scripts or physical scripts or that kind of stuff. This is the name of the game. And I've been terrible at doing it. And my commitment is I'm doing it this time. Awesome. awesome. Appreciate that. Because we're not in the real estate business, we're not in the mortgage business, we're in the communicating with our database business, right? Everybody got that part? That's huge. Somebody else got an aha? Barbara? Um, the generosity piece, I have to say, <clears throat> I've been doing the short sales for three years, and I really know that I was not bonding with my sellers whatsoever. But the last one, because I went over there and I talked with her, and I got, you know, we got a storage unit, and I just was over there all the time helping her, she bonded with me so much that she was a referral from one of the short sales, but he now is so impressed with how I bonded with her. He has given me two more referrals you know, yeah. because of that, because I was actually helping instead of saying, what can I get from you? I just want my information. So what's one word you use to describe this? One word. Oh, life changing. Okay, cool. Anybody else? Big yeah. We'll hyphenate that life change. Yeah, we'll hyphenate that life change. Yeah, okay. yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Takes all the pressure off, right? Because you know what? Yeah, it's your fault. You have to talk to them. So what? They don't think that. It's wrong. Right? Hey, check this out. So we honor your time here. We're going to stick around for a few more minutes. Uh, guys, let's connect up. So. My personal Facebook page, Brian Heckman, uh, facebook.com slash brian.heckman.18. I guess I didn't get on the Facebook train early enough to get on the page. That's so your age. Me. That's your age. What do you think? That's what I look like. Yeah. Except for my grades, man. Okay. Uh, facebook.com slash groups slash the 100 k talk. Guys, you're going to want to do this. Uh, you guys have got those written down? You're going to want to write those down. Write that last one down, facebook.com slash groups slash the 100 k club. It's a, it's a locked group, so you got to get access to it, but uh, go sign up. Here's what, uh, 
we, we kind of created that environment for people like this so that Joe's comments, what he's talking about there, that's the kind of stuff that you're gonna find on the page. I'm gonna show you an example here in just a second. Um, so check this out. Uh, you guys are gonna walk out of here, and you know what? For some people, it's gonna be wow, life changing. For some people, experience Asian Joe in the back with 1,500 people in his database. He's like, gosh, before, man, I screwed up. Like I didn't have a good communication plan, and I didn't do this, I didn't do that, and that's cool. But what we've just done is the past of the past. So now today, Joe gets to walk out of here with. Not only my new clients, this is what I'm going to do, but now he's got a plan for, hell, by this week, by the end of the next week, he could have all those people hammer through on the phone and reconnect and find out, do we have 30, Joe, or do we have, do we have 80 people that actually know, like, and trust you if you would just communicate with them? We don't know that. Right. And the discipline there is jumping on, making the phone calls. There's technology that can help you out. It's going to cost you some money, but the amount it's going to save you is tremendous. But here's the thing. Heighten your awareness. Right, so when you walk out of here, it's like you got rose-colored glasses on, a different way to do business and do life. So heighten your awareness for other opportunities that you've got, just the doors that open up, even outside of business. You know, people that, those three asterisks on the top there, people that, whether it be someone at your church, someone in your family, someone in your neighborhood, in business, a client or a pearl source that like, wow, they could really get something out of this, because it is, it's, this is, Universal across real estate, mortgage, it doesn't matter. This is great stuff. Um, and then there's this, uh, this philosophy that's mindset to each one, teach one. Being an encourager with people. Just know, you know, you're going to walk out of these doors and you're equipped with stuff and with knowledge that other people do not have. So go share it and invite people to come and check this stuff out. It's free, you can tell. It's not, this is no recruiting pitch. Um, you know, not, we're not coaching people or anything like that. It's we're going to help some people. And it, we're all like a magnet. People that are drawn to us, I'll help you with mortgages. People that are drawn to Bob, Bob's a great guy, great company to work for. And if you're not, hey, that's totally cool, right? Uh, quick favor, I would love for you to put my aha is, my aha is, and I want you to do that on this group page, facebook.com slash groups slash the 100K Club. Post my aha is, request access to that, that 7,000 real estate agent page I talked to you about. After you do that, post on my Facebook wall. You just request it so I can get you accelerated access there. You can register for that June workshop at implementnow.us. Encourage someone. Just get in the habit of this. Call them, text them, Facebook them, something. Write them a power note. Write them a handwritten note. Just encourage somebody. Just get in the habit of it. Real estate or not real estate, it doesn't matter. And then implement your first day within 24 hours. Make it small. Make it manageable so you can go implement it. Awesome quote, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful later on it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Guys, database stuff, like Joe said, man, it's a pain in the butt. But you did you get disciplined to do this. Killer, killer results. Uh, University of Florida football, their their weight room has the same quote. Pain of discipline, pain of regret, take the fit. So don't leave without access to this webpage and get on there. Facebook.com slash groups slash the hundred K club. And there's the whole point. This is this environment we created. There's over, I think, over 100 agents yeah. in it right now. Ideas plus inspiration plus implementation. You'll see stuff take off. I'm going to show you this real quick. Uh, a great example of this page. Worth the price of admission here. Even more because it's free. So here's what the page looks like. Well, what's it like? Uh, what is there? There's 103 members. And you can see here, here's an awesome post Cindy Hayden put here this morning. She walked in, she's next door in the, in the military thing. Here's her post, and, and obviously not all these are this long, but look at her stuff. I mean, basically, here's what I want to point out. She came to this training on Monday. She, look her up. She's pretty thought about a good agent here in Nelson County. Thanks to Michael Mayer for this wisdom. Before today, I hadn't really committed to and implemented my referral goal. Yes, I do a ton of referrals, just get bogged down. It doesn't get bogged down, right, in all this stuff. <coughs> Kakamini, which is Michael Mayer's word. I just think that's a funny word. So I've been talking each morning at 8 a.m. with my accountability partner, practicing scripts. Top 100 real estate agent in Pinellas County, practicing scripts every day at 8 a.m. It's pretty impressive. Talk about discipline. Uh, doing boosts, which Michael Mayer, uh, through Bob, Michael Mayer has offered to do the boost training he does once a month for $197. If you're interested at the bottom of your form, you can put boost, and Bob can give you information on that. 
and attended Monday's implementation workshop with Brian and Bob and just hit me when Bob stressed keeping it real and simple with this Excel example. She's got a database. She's got two databases. Right? Um, basically reminded me to stop making excuses and just do it. So fast forward, I, my annual referral goal, I mean, this is, a, our, this is like our private page. It's, it's for a group, you're going to see it if you get access to this. Annual referral goal is to get 500 referrals and to receive 250, which breaks down to getting 42 a month. Receiving 21, I'm at 65.08% uh, of my referral goal for May. So like there is exactly from a pretty doggone good producing agent of the kind of stuff that's shared there. So what I want you to do is share your aha on that page. Just put my aha is and just share whatever your aha was on that page. So what you find is people start sharing this stuff and we didn't do it for their training this week. We just realized it's probably a great thing to, to, to share so that if you're not in this room, if you didn't get the GTAR, we talked about different stuff at GTAR. Monday night, we talked about different stuff. In Orlando, different conversations happen, right? So share that stuff so you get the max benefit out of it, right? So that's, uh, again, that's facebook.com slash groups slash the 100K Club. Make sense? Guys, we're finished on time. Really appreciate y'all being here. Um, and those sheets right there, if you just leave those on your desk, and we'll grab those and get you guys the uh, invite up on the Implement Now workshop once we got it set up for next month. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Brian. Thank you.